Hey guys, thanks for joining and welcome to our 59th video on ProjectEuler.net. Today we're going to be taking a look at problem number 59, XOR decryption. The problem reads, each character on a computer is assigned a unique code and the preferred standard is ASEII. For example, uppercase A is equal to 65, asterisk is equal to 42, and lowercase K is equal to 107. A modern encryption method is to take a text file, convert the bytes to ASEII, then XOR each byte with a given value taken from a secret key. The advantage with the XOR function is that using the same encryption key on the ciphertext restores the plain text. For example, 65 XOR 42 is equal to 107, then 107 XOR 42 is equal to 65. For unbreakable encryption, the key is the same length as the plain text message and the key is made up of random bytes. The user would keep the encrypted message and the encryption key in different locations and without both halves it is impossible to decrypt the message. Unfortunately, this method is impractical for most users, so the modified method is to use a password as a key. The password is shorter than the message, which is likely the key is repeated cyclically throughout the message. The balance for this method is using a sufficiently long password key for security, but short enough to be memorable. Your task has been made easy, as the encryption key consists of three lowercase characters. Using this file here, a file containing the encrypted ASCII codes, and the knowledge that the plain text must contain common English words, decrypt the message and find the sum of the ASCII values in original text. So let's think about what we have to do here exactly. They tell us our task has been made easy, lucky us, because the encryption key consists of three lowercase characters. I'm going to interpret that as the encryption key is three lowercase characters. So with that, it sounds like we need to download this file. Then three lowercase characters gives us 26 times 26 times 26 combinations of different possible passwords because maybe a letter is repeated. So we need to run through using each password and do the XOR decryption and the knowledge that the plain text must contain common English words. Okay, that's our hook. So we need to decrypt using possible passwords and figure out how to determine if it has common English words. I'm thinking we can look for stop words such as and, the, is. So let's take that approach. Let's go over to our workspace, create a code file and get started. I'm gonna be implementing this in TypeScript. If you're not familiar with that language, it is a superset of JavaScript and the syntax is similar to most common programming languages. So you should have no troubles following along in this video. And I'm going to be implementing this in a class, which is not required per se. I just want to leverage some utilities which I've written to run the program. Okay, for the first thing, let's bring in that file. p059 cipher.txt. I'll just copy and paste it directly from here. So this is a sequence of the ASCII codes, comma separated. So we need to read that in character by character. We could just read the entire thing into memory at once, but it would be more efficient to read it character by character. Then we can generate numbers from the characters. Then we need to, for each code, X or it, given a possible password. So once we read it into memory, and as we go parse it into an array of codes, we need to, for each password, follow this method to restore the possible plain text because we don't know the password ahead of time. So it looks like if the password is length three, every third character here, every third ASCII code that is, would be XORed with the first of the password, every 3n plus one with the second, every 3n plus two with the third. So that's how we can go about this one. First thing I'll do, I'll just make a method load codes, which will be a number array. For simplicity for now, I'm just going to return fs.readfilesync. And I'll just hard code the file name in here. Codes str is equal to that. Then I'll say return codes str dot split by comma dot map code goes to parse int code. First thing I'll do is I'll just console dot log to make sure that's working properly. Let's run that. I need to pass in UTF-8, otherwise it was giving us an array buffer. So let's run that again. Okay, good. So now we have the codes themselves. So I'm gonna make a method private do solve, which will return a number of the sum. We'll say const cipher codes is equal to this dot load codes. Combinations dot 
for each possibilities, three, A through Z. So combinations dot for each n possibilities, this is similar to generating permutations of length three over the given choices, but instead what we'll do is n possibilities, which lets us have all the permutations plus cases where a character is repeated. Then for each, we'll invoke a callback and we can do our work there. So letters will be an array of lowercase letters. I'm gonna go into node real quick, a dot char code at zero, and then z dot char code at, which is probably a plus 26 or plus 25. Array dot, or new array, 26 dot fill, just random value dot map index. We're going to say 97 plus index. Then dot map code goes to string dot from char code code. That should give us an array of lowercase letters so we don't have to just type them in manually ourselves. So those will be the choices that we have. And then the callback will say pwd. I'm gonna make a helper method, private decipher, password, string, codes. I'll call password to three to make it explicit that the password is three characters long. Codes will be the number array. Or we'll have the sum value here, or negative one if we don't think that this is valid. Plain codes is equal to codes.map, code index. First, I'm going to say const password codes is equal to array dot from password three. So we're converting the string into an array of characters, and then we're mapping character to get the char code at the character. So in other words, now we have an array of numbers. I need to quickly look up JavaScript XOR. Okay, so it's simple in this case, just this character here. I'm going to reduce instead of map so that we can just take two steps at once of converting it, of doing the XOR and then converting it to a string. So we're gonna return str plus password codes index modulus three, XOR code. Then we're just gonna add console.log plain codes. It's not plain codes, I'll call it plain text because it's a string now. And for now, I'm just gonna return some dummy value. On sum is equal to, better yet, I'll have a variable let sum is equal to zero. Sum is equal to, I'll set it to negative one, this.decipher text, password three, cipher codes. If sum is greater than negative one, return false. This will tell us to stop generating possibilities then we'll return sum. So what I wanna do now is just console.log the plain text for a simple example, see what it looks like. So we're getting a lot of numbers. Now what I'll do is if plain text.index of and is greater than negative one, I'll console.log return 10, else return negative one. That way we can see if this approach will work for us. We don't need to console.log the letters anymore. Oh, I need to say string dot from char code before you we are still mapping it to char code numbers, even if it was mapping to letters. Okay, so it looks like and is not enough. So we'll say and and the is greater than negative one. I missed that conditional there. Let's run it again. We could make this more efficient by instead of doing index of, we can search for everything right as we're reducing. I'll only come back to that if we actually need that for performance improvement. If we're already performant, then I'll exclude that. I wanna make a variable const common words is equal to and the is. Then I'll say const has common words go to plain text dot reduce boolean no 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 common words dot reduce i'll use a for loop instead let has common 
words is equal to true. For lat i is equal to zero. i is less than common words dot length. i plus plus. Const word is equal to common words. i. If, first let me say this, has common words and, so that way we can exit quickly. If plain text dot index of word is equal to negative one, has common words is equal to false. Then here we can just say if has common words. There's also something we can do here. We can make sure that a space exists on either side. We could use a regular expression for this. I'll just leave it as it is for now. So if both of those are negative one, then has common words is equal to false. Let's try that. Okay, so that was our approach. Took 159 milliseconds for this, but we have our way of doing this. So now, actually I put this into one step, but I should have put it into two separate steps because we'll need the plain codes again. Codes.map code index goes to this. Then we say plain codes dot reduce. And we can just say from char code code. Since we have the common words, now we can do is return plain codes dot reduce. And then just sum up all the plain codes. I'm going to copy this in and just paste it at the bottom of the file. Plain text. Okay. And we got that in 240 milliseconds, which is decent performance. Let's make sure first that we are correct, which I'd be surprised if we weren't because that is clearly plain text. Okay, that is correct, so that's good. So we got the correct answer, it only took 240 milliseconds. If I really wanted to make this thing faster, what I would do is for reading the codes, instead of reading the entire thing into memory as a string, then splitting the string and mapping the codes, I would read it character by character as we did in problems before. Then for this common words part, instead of checking after we've fully assembled the string, I would scan the string as we're mapping codes or as we're reducing the plain text and see if they all exist at that point. We wouldn't even need to actually decipher the whole plain text at that point because we do have the plain codes. We could just check and exit this part immediately once we found all of the words. But this is only 240 milliseconds, so I think we can leave it as it is here. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications for more Project Euler videos. I'm going to be posting these at a rate of one per day, 12 o'clock noon until we have 100 videos published, 100 problems solved. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.